All right, hello, this is Dimitri, and I'm doing a vlog post about the MBTI because this is an issue that has been concerning me a lot recently, and I feel like when all else fails, you go to the internet, right? And you'll have to excuse me because I've got some errands that I've got to run, so I'll just have to um, f carry them out whilst, uh, whilst I'm doing this. So my personality type, well, I'm not going to say what it is because I want people to guess but uh, this, I will say, though, that this video concerns not my personality type, but um, another personality type, and this personality is an ENTJ. And I'll just give a bit of a spoiler away that this is a personality type that I've had a very interesting and conflicted um, relationship with, because uh, normally I do not... Necess I, I, this is the personality type that I've definitely encountered the most difficulty with, personally. That's aroused the most, the closest thing to rage within me. Um, simply because of my high moral standards, I, 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 it, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around how this personality type works. However, at the same time, during those few times those few occasions when I made friends with an ENTJ, uh, those friendships were some of the most profoundly moving kind of unspoken kind of things. The, 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 the kind of camaraderie that I developed with this other person would be this kind of unspoken, um, not exactly sentimental thing, but, but kind of a a meeting of very different souls, and we, we kind of had this mutual respect and uh, camaraderie between us. Now, what, what, with that preface uh, said, I'd like to discuss something called extroverted thinking. Now, my personality type, and this is going to be a big giveaway, has a weak extroverted thinking side, and this has been concerning me a lot recently because I'm interested in truth and I want to know as many perspectives as possible, um, but I don't want to invalidate my own because I know that my own perceptions of things tend to be very, very rare. So, my, and I understand that um, NTJs have a strong extroverted thinking aspect, and rather than going into individual anecdotes about people that I've encountered with this personality type, I'd like to discuss what my perspective is what my guess is, my, my hunch, as to what the inside of the ec extroverted uh, thinker's head is like, uh, particularly the NTJs, because I want to get immediate feedback about whether or not that is true. And I understand that this is quite a, a step that I'm taking, but somehow I feel like it will help me to be able to discern in which situations where I'm interacting with the ENTJ I am in the wrong, and which situations the other is in the wrong, based upon w what is a healthy standard for the other's personality type, and what is a neurotic standard for that. Now the thing about the ENTJ is this, um, the main function is extroverted thinking, and as I can uh, um, imagine, this presents the world in almost, um, it, it sees the world with almost the same clarity as you might um, see um, a, a, a work of a work of architecture in like a, a metropolitan complex. In other words, um, when you see a very um, very straightforward skyscraper or something like that, with these windows arranged in a row uh, horizontally and then descending down vertically, or you see something like say the San Diego Convention Center, which you can Google a picture of, that's immediately the, the impression I get of, of the, this, this worldview. The, the world outside is seen as very structured, and it's almost as though I'm looking at it from behind a glass, behind which I can look at that tree, and, uh, you know, I, I don't really attribute any personal significance to it. I might, I, I might recall certain, like, I mean, I, I, I don't really 
think much about the tree when I see it. Rather, I, I know, to, you know, we can all see these are trees. We know that, you know, if you cut them down, it'll make lumber or something like that, and, and so on and so forth. And it's a very, um, very clear cut, very definite, not personal way of looking at things. But the, but the whole triumph of this kind of thing is, you know, within this society, w w within this human civilization, um, I, I can manage to, to make my way, I can find my way around this thing and be successful. So that's basically how I interpret the extroverted thinking function. But, but, but this is um, how I interpret it from the viewpoint that I would normally consider neurotic because I feel like that's a, a ridiculously superficial aspect of it. And normally the neuroses for every personality type comes about from overvaluing the main function. So now let me present to you what I envision the secondary function, which is necessary to balance out the personality type to be, and this is introverted intuition. Introverted intuition uh, looks at, say, this bush here, and um, it kind of uh, sees almost into the essence of it almost. Like, you almost get the impression that uh, uh, you, you, you feel somewhat grounded in a, in a kind of understanding of the world which you can't fully rationalize, basically. It, it almost has the feeling of like swimming in an ocean. Like, like, like all the world around you is somehow this continu continuous pattern and you, you're, you can see inside your own head and the very particular way in which your mind um, uh, processes the information about the world and it can make it a much more fascinating place. It's like in a video game is the best example I can imagine. If extroverted thinking is a strategic element of a game like Halo which allows you to complete the objectives and so on and so forth and move forward and advance the extra, the introverted intuition is the more aesthetic element of the game, which somehow gives you the impression, though, that the game tells you something about life that is not entirely rational. Now, this may be rejected at first by the entirely rational mind, which would be the extroverted thinking mind, uh, operating on its own. But the problem that I see with that is, um, quite simply, that if you want, if you want to have a logical proof, for example. You need, in the first place, to discern that all of your premises are, are either true or not true before you assess whether your logic is valid or invalid. Actually, you can do it in reverse, but uh, your premises have to be true. But, but sometimes to discern whether a premise is true or not, you can't rely entirely upon uh, logic uh, because you have to take in some information um, that's not part of the logical process to discern whether or not something is true. It might come from a, a, a more mysterious source. And similarly, think of all of the postmodern philosophical arguments which say something to the effect of, um, well, I can't prove that all the world is not in my head. And true, if you think it out rationally, you can't prove that. But, um, but intuitively, though, I mean, just for our intents and purposes, it's advantageous for me to say, well, let's just say that you do exist. Let's say, um, you know, this isn't in my head. Because I have this hunch that, you know, th this isn't, you know, uh, here I have to invoke something beyond the rational level in order to discern what is, what is true. So that's how I interpret introverted intuition. And I, I feel like, I have been around people, and I myself have been a person who has incredible intuition. And so there are th certain things that occur to me in the natural world which don't occur to most people. So they appear obvious to me personally, but they, they wouldn't appear obvious to someone who has an underdeveloped intuitive function. It's just like, what are you talking about? And so it can be very unnerving for both parties because one is really frustrated because one can feels like the other person's totally talking about something that's not there, and the other person's like, well, it's right here. Why can't you see it? Um, and it all comes back down to a way of using one's mind that sees the way the, the intricate.